Welcome to a Legendarium special in which we will seek to answer a question. Namely, did alchemist Roger Bacon create a talking head? Fortune-telling automata became a fixture of penny arcades and amusement parks for generations of school children. However, these modern creations owe their origin in part to the legend of the brazen head. A sorcerer could supposedly endow this imaginary and all-knowing mechanical device with the power to answer any question and predict the future. Called brazen because the alchemists made them from brass, their popularity peaked during the Renaissance. During that time, plays and romances featured brazen heads, and great thinkers pondered the supposed mysteries of their making. Supposedly, a Franciscan monk and alchemist named Roger Bacon created the first brazen head. Bacon was born in 1220 into one of the French-speaking aristocratic families who ruled England after the Norman Conquest. As such, he studied at the University of Paris, where he studied geometry and astrology before earning his Master of Arts degree. After 1247, Bacon made a considerable change in his study under the guidance of Robert Gross Test. He turned his energies towards optics and alchemy, the latter being a branch of science devoted to finding the Philosopher's Stone. Alchemists believed this much-sought object perfected all things, from turning lead into gold and making men immortal by restoring the innocence of the Garden of Eden. In pursuing his goal, Roger Bacon became one of the pioneers of experimental science, performing numerous experiments in optics. Bacon became especially fascinated with making astronomical clocks from brass, which likely fueled later rumors of his dark experiments. Of course, as Bacon's fame spread, so did dark rumors about what went on in his laboratory. Bacon's enemies claimed that he communed with Satan, made a mirror that foretold the future, and built a brazen head from brass. One of those critics further claimed that he used black magic to endow it with the power of speech and the ability to answer any question correctly. Bacon enjoyed protection from prosecution until the death of Pope Clement in 1268. After that, his enemies gained ground until sometime between 1277 and 1279, Bacon's fellow Franciscans condemned him to prison. They did so not only because of alchemy, but his criticism of powerful church scholars and his habit of making prophecies. It is unknown how long Bacon remained in prison, though he did publish a final work before his death in 1292. It is telling that similar stories spread about Bacon's mentor Robert Gross Test and even Pope Sylvester II, who reigned 200 years before Bacon's time. William of Malmesbury claimed that the future Pope Sylvester II traveled to the Muslim kingdoms of Spain to learn about astrology, and then stole a book of spells from a Saracen philosopher. With this tome, he made a pact with Satan that supposedly assured his rise to the papal throne. Renaissance storytellers claimed that 13th century Saint Albertus Magnus spent 30 years building a brass man able to correctly answer any question. However, the automaton proved so talkative that a disciple of St. Albertus, the famed Thomas Aquinas, knocked it to pieces to stop its constant chattering. This whopper of a story endured for three centuries until a Tudor author wrote the famous history of Friar Bacon. It described the magical object as a precise brass replica of a man's head, including the brains. The play claimed Bacon wanted to use the head to build a magical wall of brass around Britain to protect it from invasion, which reflected Tudor fears of the Spanish Armada. However, the play has Bacon go too far by summoning the devil to ask for his advice. Satan announced that the head would speak after a few weeks if powered by the continual flume of the six hottest simples, a selection of plants used in alchemical medicine. Throughout the play, Bacon tried to extract the secrets of the universe from his brazen head. Instead, he slept through the words of wisdom that the head finally spoke, which were, Time is. Time was. Time is past. 
This play, which portrayed Bacon as a necromancer, appeared 300 years after Bacon's death, recycling stories told about him and other famous men. Given that no list of instructions or a detailed account of such a brazen head being made have emerged, we can likely dismiss this story as fancy. Yet it shows the enduring power of Bacon's reputation and our ongoing fascination with alchemy. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.